Okay, good morning, Northbridge. Good morning. Good morning. We are here today and a little chilly, right? Yes, yes, I hear lots of yeses out there. All right, well, hey, we are glad you're here, whether you're uh, joining us live here in person or whether you're online from the coziness of your home. We want to welcome you and just say we're glad you are here today. Let me be the first to say happy Valentine's Day to you all today. Uh, I hope uh, you ladies have been taken care of out there, okay? If you, uh, if you haven't, then uh, talk with Pastor Tony about that because he is a huge Valentine's Day person. So, uh, uh, but anyway, we are glad you're here. Um, I'll tell you what, we're going to start our time together with a uh, time of prayer. Go ahead and stand to your feet. And uh, today may be a day you have to tap your toe a little bit more. You might have to jiggle a little bit more, whatever that looks like uh, as the band leads us. And uh, we're excited about, uh, about worshiping today. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, just thank you so much for today. Thank you for everything you blessed us with. Uh, God, we just uh, ask that you would just have your way this morning. Uh, Father God, I know that we've had issues with, uh, with heat and, and it's chilly, but Father, we know that uh, it, that's not going to deter us from worshiping you. And Father, it's not going to deter us from experiencing what it is that you want us to experience today. And so God, we are just glad we're here. And we're glad we have the opportunity to worship together. And would you just lead us and guide us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
around around us this morning. I don't know if you picked up on some of the themes that are that we've just sung about, uh, but if you did, you'll just notice these: that the Lord is in control of all things. He's in control of my life. He's in control of your life. He's in control of our our heat today. He's in control of the weather outside. Uh, nothing slips his mind. He's concerned about all things in our lives. This morning you woke up with, with things on your heart. Um, some of you may have woke up with plans, um, the things you have to get done today. Some of you woke up with just a uh, heartache over things that are beyond your ability to control. And I just want to speak into that as we've just sung about these things. That God cares for you. He loves you. He's for you. And in Him all things are possible. So uh, there was a story that it, an event happened in the, in the ministry of Jesus where a man came and he stood before Jesus. And Jesus asked him to follow him. And he, he couldn't pay the price. And so he walked away. And the disciples were stunned by this. And they said, how then can anyone be saved? If this man in all his goodness could not be saved, how can anyone be saved? And, and Jesus' simple reply is, with God all things are possible. With God all things are possible. All people have the possibility of knowing him, of receiving his love, his goodness, his salvation. But even in our life, the situations we face, all things are possible with him. He has the last say in our lives. He has the last say in our situation. Let's go before the Lord and uh, and this just uh, un, un, unshackle, or just give away our burden this morning. So Father, that's what we want to do. We just want to lay before you these, these hurts, these concerns, these longings, and just lay them before you and say, Father, will you just meet us in our place of need? Would you help us, Lord, in those situations that are beyond our understanding, beyond our control? And Lord, we just lay them at your feet, trusting, trusting in your sovereignty, trusting in your goodness, trusting in your faithfulness, trusting in your unbelievable love for us, that you will take care of the things that burden us this morning. Lord, free us from worry so that we may not miss out on what you have prepared for us this morning through your word. Free us, God, from those things that trouble us, knowing that you are with us, that you will help us, that you will guide us, and that you will provide the answers in the end. Lord, we love you, and we give thanks for all that you do. Your mercies endure forever. Your love um, we cannot fully explain. All right, children, I um, invite you to go ahead and, and skedaddle off to uh, Kids Zone or the Warm Tropics. And uh, uh, adults, you have to stay. You have to stay. You can't go with them. They're going to a warm place. Rest assured, there is heat in that other building. And uh, and we're just going to make it okay. At least at least today, I know no one's going to fall asleep because it's too cold. And you may, may, may die of hyperthermia. Hyperthermia? Hyperthermia. Hyperthermia. Hypothermia, yeah. Stay awake, in other words. Don't go to sleep on us. I'll do my best to, uh, to be very cognizant of the time and just uh, just wrap up and stay as warm. Just think warm thoughts. I should have preached on hell this morning. That would have been tough. Try to break the ice a little bit. Um, past few weeks, Pastor Tony's been uh, leading us through... Um, the scriptures regarding the promises of God. And this morning, we want to focus in on God's promises regarding our future. Right? That's a topic that all of us are very concerned about, That's something that we all have to struggle with and come to grips over, and that is regarding what will take place in our future. There's a, a great movie trilogy of all times out there called Back to the Future. You guys seen those Back to the Future uh, films? Well, yeah. Back to the Future uh, 2, um, this is the, the basic plot uh, of the movie. Um, uh, Doc, played by Christopher Lloyd, 
and, and Marty McFly, uh, played by Michael J. Fox, um, have to go into the future in order to attempt to correct uh, something that the Ma Marty McFly's son is going to do that's going to damage the future of the family. So they have to go into the future and to reconcile that situation. And that great movie, not sure about the Back, in, back in the Future 3, but Back to the Future 2, not a bad sequel, right? But there's, a, there's an incident or a dialogue that takes place between Marty McFly and, and, and Doc about the future. And this is what, what he says about the future. Now, Marty says, he's looking at life, the possibility of his life, 30 years into the future. And he says this to Doc. The future. Unbelievable. i got to check that out, Doc. To which Doc says, all in good time, Marty. I wish I could do a good Christmas for you. That would be great today, but I can't. All in good time, Marty. We're on a tight schedule here. And Marty says to Doc, now tell me about my future. I know, I know I'm going to make it big, but do I become like a rich rock star or something? And Doc says, please, Marty, no one should know too much about their own destiny, to which Marty says, right, right, but, but I am going to be rich, right? right? So as long as what Marty's getting at is I can take whatever is ahead of me, but as long as I'm rich, everything is going to be okay, just like Marty McFly. We are all fascinated about what our future is going to turn out to be. In fact, that's why Americans, according to the United Kingdom's Daily Mail, spent $2.9 billion seeking the services of, of psychics and, and fortune tellers. That's why reading of the horoscopes are at an all-time high in our nation, because people are worried about something that they have no control over. In other words, we seek out these fortune tellers and these, these horoscopes and, and these psychics because we want to mitigate all the risks that may take place in the future that we cannot control. All the unknowns surrounding our future, that's what is at stake. And we are tempted to, to seek these avenues because the future is beyond our control. And when the future is beyond our control, then, then oftentimes we worry, and worry sets in. But here's something that worry does not do for us. Worry does not help us at all in life situations. It has no solution to the things that we are dealing with presently. And obviously it has no solutions for the things that are yet to come to pass in our life. And though we have no, no control over our future, this is the good news this morning. The scripture tells us that while we have no control of our futures, there is a God in heaven who does. He knows all things about your future. He knows where your life is going. He knows what's going to take place uh, later on this afternoon in your life. He knows what's going to take place this coming week in your life. Um, he knows what's going to take place uh, five years from now, ten years from now, thirty years from now in your life. He already sees it. And for you and I, that's good news this morning. For you and I, that kind of gives us a, an ability just to kind of catch our breath through the craziness of life to know that God knows our future. Now, here's why I think it's very interesting for you to know this and connect with this truth. And the first thing is this, is that we all live our lives in the future. Everything about our lives are still yet to come in the future. None of your life is left in the past or even today. I mean, in the moment, we are living in the moment, but we are living in the moment for the next moment in the future. And all your life is in the future. And, and two things we say about that. We've already said, number one, you're not in control. And number two is we have very limited ability to plan for those things that may come our way. That God already knows what's going to happen. So if God already knows what's going to happen to me later on today and next week and five years from down the road or ten years down the road or thirty years down the road, then I would want to tune my heart to say, what does the scripture say to what God is going to do to help me regarding my future? One of the attributes or the characteristics of our God is that he is a God who is omniscient. Now that is a, a big word, omniscient. But literally what it means is that God knows everything. 
And because he knows everything, he is our best help in regards to those worries that consume us about our future. Now, I just want to do a little, little bombing on us this morning, a theological bomb on us, because in order for us to understand how God operates and what he does in regards to our future, we have to understand a little bit about theology regarding who God is. Now, if God is unlimited in his knowledge, then that means he knows all things. And because he knows all things, listen, everything is possible for God. Because he knows all things, everything is actualized in God's determination, in God's knowledge, in God's understanding about the future. He knows everything. Nothing catches him by surprise. He never says, gee, I did not see that coming. He never says, that took me by surprise. Right? There is no, no such thing as a concept of God being surprised. He knows all things. He sees all things in the future just as much as he sees all things in the past simultaneously. You see, we are people who are limited by time because we're created beings and we were created within the scope of time, right? So time rules our thinking. It rules our, our life. Everything about us fits into the paradigm of time. But our God, according to Scripture, our God was God before there was the invention of time. So God operated and has always operated outside of time. I know that kind of blows your mind a little bit, but you have to understand this. God is not controlled by time like you and I are controlled by time. God is not concerned by time like time is, con is concerning to us. If God is outside of time, then time means nothing to God. In other words, because time means nothing to God, God is never late in keeping his promise. Because time is not limiting God, then God always shows up for us in our time of need at just the right moment. That's why it's so important for us to understand that, that theological concept of God being omniscient. You see, for us, that we are, we have, we have situations um, that are bound in time. We receive a, a, a medical prognosis. We need God urgency, urgency to come and help us immediately. We have a financial need. We need God to show up this week. Um, we have a relational issue going on in our life. We need God to show up ASAP. Well, for God, that this doesn't exist. For him, he is outside of time. But in his own, in his own ways, by his own means, according to his own directives, he will come through for us. Now, I didn't include this um, on the uh, outline on the screens, but if you have a Bible here, if you have a pen ready, I just want you to write down this, this tremendous verse, Deuteronomy 31a. Deuteronomy 31 This is a powerful verse in regards to God being all-knowing, and, and powerful. This is what it says in, in Deuteronomy 31 8. And the Lord is the one going ahead of you. He will be with you. He will not desert you or abandon you. Do not fear or be dismayed. So, in other words, God is just as active in the future as He is in the present as He has been in the past. Equally. And for the scripture in Deuteronomy 31 8 to say, God is going before you. How does God go before us? Unless he's already in the future. Unless he's already operating in our terminology in the future while we are living in the present. It says God is going ahead of you and he will be with you. So God is with you in the present, but he's also going ahead of you in the future. Now, ponder that this afternoon over your bowl of chili and get back with you okay, on, that, on that concept. So that is what God is doing, and that's his promise for you and I. That's why we can take courage when we're going through the difficulties of life. He's already in your future. Unknown to you, He's already there. He already sees it. He's in control of it. Just as He is working and in control of your present. I hope that that encouraged you in some way this morning as it has me 
in my own situations. You see, we as pastors, we, we go through life just like you go through life. We, we, we have things that upend our schedules like it upends your schedule. We have things that come across our path that we weren't expecting just like you experience in your life. We have times where we have to cry out to God um, for God to come through just like you have to cry out to God to come through. So that's why I love this verse out of Deuteronomy 31 8. He is going with me and he is going before me and I can walk courageously to whatever circumstances come through. Because God is omniscient. He can see everything in history past. He can see he knows everything in history present. He knows everything yet to come in the history of the future. So that goes through your life as well. Psalm 139, 15 and 16. In fact, it's all the entire chapter 139 speaks about the blessing, the beauty of life itself. And this is what, what, he, what it says in verses 15 and 16. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret. In other words, as you were being fashioned in, in, in the womb, God knew you. And he skillfully formed you in the depths of the earth. Your eyes have seen my formless substance. And in your book was written all the days that were ordained for me, when as yet there was not one of them. Love that. So from, from, the, from the moment that you were uh, brought into being in your mother's womb, God knew you. And God ordained every single day yet for you to live out. He's already ordained it. It's already written down. What yet one had yet come to pass. That is just incredible about our God. Job in, in chapter uh, 34 verse 21 says this. For God's eyes are upon the ways of a man. And he sees all his steps. In other words, God knows what is going to take place in our life. Every single second of our life. God knows your life from beginning to end. And God has thought far more about your life than you would ever thought about your life yourself. God knows intimately the plans He has for you more than you know the plans you have for yourself. I mean, you're probably just like me that there are things in my life that I plan for my life um, that have not come to pass, may not come to pass. There are dreams that I had when I was a, when I was a young man that no longer are, are, are true today. Same way with you. But God knows everything about you. He knows His plans for your life. And listen, all we see in Scripture regarding our lives in, 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 the, in the hands of God, our lives in the eyes of God is this, is that He cares for us deeply. He cares for you. Magnificent. And His plans for you. Yes, even in the midst of the heartaches of life, even in the midst of the trials of life, even in the midst of the setbacks of life, overarching plans for you, His plans for you are good and merciful and kind. Since God is on mission, you can trust Him with all of His promises that He has for you. In fact, the Scriptures make, make out 7,000 promises that God made towards His people. In regards to his future, there is probably about 20 of them regarding our future. We don't have time this morning to go through 20. I know you all want, want me to go through all 20, right, this morning? I know you do. But I just want to, I just want to highlight four very, very quick. I, mean, I really need that for time. Just four promises that God has made for us. In other words, this is what God guarantees us when it comes to our future. We can bank on these things. So God will come will see that they come. Number one, God promises to be with me every step of the way. In my future, I don't know what it's going to be like. I don't know the timings that's going to take place. I don't know the people that are going to come in and out of my life. I don't know what, what's going to happen, but God already does. I can get my calendar out, and I can make appointments, and I can set dates, and I can set goals. But God truly knows what will happen. I just have a limited ability to plan. But I have no control of what actual events 
are going to take place in my life. But I can live confidently. I can live with courage knowing that God is with me every step of the way. How do I know this? Because God oftentimes repeats this promise over and over again to his people that he is with them. Look at verses at Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5 and 6. And it's very powerful. In fact, Paul, or the writer of Hebrews, is quoting Old Testament scripture. He says, make sure your character is free from the love of money, being content with what you have. For he himself has said, I will never desert you, nor will I ever abandon you. So that we confidently say, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What will man do to me? A great fasting to me that that um, right before he would speak about the confidence that God is never going to desert me, he says, don't worry about money. Don't let money consume you. In other words, don't, don't allow money just to be your overarching desire in life because God will take care of you. He will take care of all of the needs that you have in life. And he will, what? He will never leave you. He will never abandon you. Um, I, I love that word, never. I looked it up in the Greek, and this is what it means. It means no way, Jose. It, will, it, it cannot be. It is impossible for God to abandon you. It is impossible for, for God to forsake you. It is impossible for God to desert you. Yes, you're going to have people come and go in your life that will abandon you. Yes, you'll have people that come in, into your life that will disappoint you. Yes, you'll have people that come into your life that will make promises to you and then not follow through on those promises. But every single thing that we see in Scripture is that God and His character is 100% provable in this, that He will keep His word to you. And He says that He will never abandon you. You can rest assured He will never abandon you. Every moment of your life, He is with you. In the good days, He is with you. In the hard days, He is with you. In the days in which you get the, uh, the news that you weren't expecting, He is right there, there with you. When you have to go through life in the darkest part of the storm, He is with you. He will never turn His back on you. There's nothing that you can do. If you are a child of God, there's nothing that you can do that will cause Him to walk out of your life. Through that covenant with Christ that we have, we, He is permanently sealed to us. Every step of the way, every second of the day, the Lord is right with you, and He will see you through it. Give you some hope this morning. Whatever you may be facing, that God's going to see you through it all for you. Secondly, God only does a promise to be here with us every step of the way. He also promises to guide me when I am confused. Now, in the future, you're going to be making decisions. It's like you're making decisions right now. It's like you made decisions in the past. And these decisions that you make, some of them are life-altering decisions. We're given opportunities all the time that we ought to be taking up. And sometimes those opportunities that come into our life are, are very good things. But often the times those things that are good in life, they're not beneficial for us. And so we have to turn to the Lord and ask Him in those moments of confusion, what do I do in this moment, God? Where do I go? Um, how shall I respond? The Lord is there with us to give us answers for the things that are coming in our life. You know, I would say that even in a, a church our size, uh, this this. There's going to be questions such as, Lord, do I, do I take this job that's being offered to me? Lord, do I, do I need to move my family uh, to another city, to another state, in order to uh, pursue a better opportunity? Maybe there's a place you need to go the, away from family, the things that you've known to be sure and secure because there is a greater op financial opportunity waiting for you somewhere else. What do you do there? For those who are young in our congregation, who do you marry? You know, God, God, who is that person that you have for me? Who's that perfect complement, that perfect helpmate for me? Who should, who, who should that be? Should I buy a home? Um, should, we, should we make a large purchase and, and that will help us as a family? 
what we do about these medical situations that we we have before us. God says, in those midst of those opportunities that are before you, those questions that you are seeking answers to, those questions that you may, may not have an immediate uh, solution to, God says, I will come alongside of you and I will give you wisdom. I will give you discernment. I will help you straighten out the confusion that you may be going through in certain times of our life. Now, these pivotal moments are, are, are amazing because um, the promise of God is this. I will help you with the answers. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. A great, great passage. Trust in the Lord with what? With all of your heart. Not that part of your heart. With everything in you, trust Him. When it doesn't make sense, trust Him. And when you can't see the next step to take, trust Him. When, you, when all around you feel like you're hemmed in with no solutions, trust Him with all of your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. Lean not on what you can see. Lean not on what you perceive. Lean not on what necessarily what other people say. Not lean on your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge Him. In other words, God, I invite you into my problem. I invite you into my decision-making moment. I invite you to help me make sense of it all. And what He needs us, and when you do so, when you acknowledge Him, when you give Him that open door into your heart, into your decision-making moments, this is what it says, and He will come in and He will make your has straight. Why can you why can you trust a God with these important decisions of your life? We've already seen in Psalm 139, this is why you can trust God because He, he, in, he in, in, intimately in, created you. He formed you. While you were yet in your mother's room, He, he knew you. He loved you. He, he gave you purpose when He gave you. Do that all because he, he knows the future and he's in control of his future. And the very fact that he gave his, his only son to die on the cross for you and I and for our sin, listen, we can trust him in these moments of decision in our life. God wants the very best for you. And because he wants the very best for you, you can trust him wholeheartedly. You get a lot of clarity of knowing the right thing to do by knowing God's Word. If you want to know what, God, what is your will for me? Listen, He has explained a lot about life in the Scripture. That if we could just know the Scripture, we would know what God wants for us. But in those moments where, where the Scriptures are silent, those questions where, where you need answers to that the Scriptures are silent about, you can lean in on the whispers of the Holy Spirit to direct your path to make your path straight, to give you help to make good and wise and clear decisions in your life. So God will do that. Trust Him with all your heart. Lean not in what you can see and perceive. Give Him ownership of those decisions. And He will direct your path. Thirdly, God promises to afford me in time of trouble. Now, there are times in our life that we can see trouble coming. But there's also times in our life that trouble just shows up on our door on an entrance. There's times that we can brace ourselves, the ones that we can see coming our way, we can kind of brace ourselves for that. But in the end, we have to go through a future of unknown in regards to times of trouble. In a church our size, I believe in the next year, someone in here is going to lose a loved one. Unexpected. Someone in this room is going to receive some health news that they were not expecting. It's going to alter their life plans and their life journey. Someone in this room is are going to go through some hardships in family. Relationships are going to be tested. Maybe even relationships broken. 
There are going to be times in our life that we're going to receive news that regarding our finances that we're going to have to say, you know, God, if you don't come through for us right now, we don't know if we're going to make it. Folks, those are some hard times. Those are just the realities of life. None of us, like I said at the very beginning, none of us in this room, including us as pastors, we are not excluded from trouble. We're not excluded from pain. We're not excluded from loss. We're not excluded from those things that touch our lives that make us groan, that break our hearts, that leave us in a place where we just cry out in difficulty. Bad things will happen. And when bad things do happen in our life, God says this, I make a promise to you. When those things come your way, I will be there with you. Now there are times and things in our life, and we can this will be for another time and another preaching point. There are times where God does does prevent bad things from happening. But there's also other times that He allows things to happen in our lives. In those moments where, where God allows things to happen in our life, we can trust that He will help us do it all. There's a great promise in, in Isaiah chapter 43, verses 2 to 3, that I would love for you guys just to write down and, and remember this. Right? When you pass through the water, this is the Lord speaking. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they will not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be scorched, nor will the flame burn you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your soul. And what God is showing us in this passage is not that He will keep us from calamity, not that He will keep us from pain, not that He will keep us from heartache, not that He will keep us from, from things that come about in our lives that are that are life-changing, life-altering. No, he says those things will happen. But when they do, I promise you that you will not be overwhelmed by them. They may come up to your neck theoretically, and you may think you're about to uh, not make it. And God says, no, 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 no. I will make a way for you. Turn your heart to me. I will make a way for you. If I could have, if I had a, a time-traveling DeLorean at my disposal, I would go back 30 years and speak to a 21-year-old Dave Myers. And I would tell, I would tell that young guy, with, it, with life in front of him, I would say to myself at 21, a lot of your dreams are not going to come the way you thought they were going to come. And David, there are going to be times in your life that the winds are going to be knocked out of your sail. And there are going to be people that betray you. And there are going to be people that harm you. But David, it's going to be okay. <laughs> and if I had that same DeLorean, <laughs> and I could go, and, and when I was 71, and look back to my 51, I'd say the same thing, it's going to be okay. How can we say it's going to be okay in the midst of, of the calamities of life? Because we have a God who rules over, over us. We have a God who rules over our future. We have a God who loves us now, and He will always love us in the future, and He will not allow us to go on. Do not fear, God is telling us, because you are mine. No matter what, God is faithful still. And that is why we can take courage in of life storm. And the darkest night of the soul, we can take courage that the morning is coming because God is in control of all things. Lastly, I want to share with you the last promise regarding our future is this. And this is important for all of us in this room, for all of us listening online as well. God's promise is to keep me safe. In John 10, 28, Jesus makes this unequivocal promise to us. He says, and I give them eternal life, and they will never perish, and, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. No greater promise can be found in all Scripture. This, this faith, this faith that we found in Jesus Christ, this hope that we have in Jesus Christ, this life that we have through faith in Jesus Christ, it is permanent. 
In fact, he has, according to Paul, he has sent his Holy Spirit to be put as a deposit upon our hearts to secure our salvation. There is nothing that we can do that will ever, 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 ever break that covenant that God has with us through Jesus Christ. There is nothing that can happen to us that will, that will snatch away that great hope that is found in Jesus Christ. Even though we may become faithless, the scripture says in 2 Timothy, God is still faithful to us. The reason why is that faithfulness is a characteristic of God. It's an attribute of God. He is forever faithful to us as people. And when it comes time for our salvation, no matter what our lives look like, you know, once we are born again, we are always born again. You and I do not have the authority. You and I do not have the power to undo salvation. That is tremendous news for all of us. You cannot, there is no delete button that you can hit that will take away your salvation. I'm afraid of computers. I don't know about you, but I was raised in that generation that I think if I hit a, if I hit a button on the computer, it's going to wipe everything out. Well, guess what? You can't do that with regard to your salvation. No fear. No fear in regards to the hope that you have in Jesus Christ. Psalm 139 says, God knows every day ordained for you, especially the ones that you have yet to live. And here's the wonderful news for us who are found in Jesus Christ and our hope is in Him and our salvation is Jesus Christ. That's talking about eternity. Yes, there are days on this earth that we live and we have yet to live yet still, but folks, listen, in Jesus Christ, we have a forever eternity. It may have been a double negative, I'm not sure. But we have an eternity without end. We have days without end. We have a future without end. And because of Jesus and because of his salvation, we get to enjoy the fruit of heaven. We get to enjoy the fruit of eternal life, being in the very presence of God and our Savior for all eternity. So the faithfulness of God is strong, and the promises of God is strong to us in regards to the future. We who are limited in our ability, we who are limited in our power, we who are limited in our planning, we who are limited in our understanding of the future, listen, there's a point where we have to say, we've got to submit, and we've got to say, hands up God in regards to our future, and submit and trust a God who holds all things together in his hand, who knows our future, who loves us deeply, and who will walk with us every step. Let's pray Father, we thank you for the promises in your word that in you we have all hope. In you we have victory. In you we have peace. In you everything that we need you will supply. In you, you take care of us now. In and through you, you will take care of us in the future. And we declare that, Lord, we believe that with all of our heart. And Father, that still doesn't take away the, the, hard, the hardships that we face. But Lord, it does soften His love. Knowing that you are always faithful to us. And for those, Father, watching online with us, and for those of us in this room today, Lord, I pray that you would just move mightily in their, in their present life, in their present circumstances. And for those things that we long for to come about, those things that we have been waiting for you um, to accomplish for us, for those things that are beyond our grasp to understand, we say this. We, Lord, say to you, we will take up courage and we will choose not to fear, for you are with us every step of the way. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. Knowing that God is in control of our future, knowing that God loves you, knowing that God has a plan for your life, would you stand to your feet and let's just sing this last song together as a testimony of that, as a, as a, as a way of praising God for who is in control of all things. Thank you.
Holy Spirit, guide my vision, help me see the way you see. Always Jesus, ever Jesus Christ, the glorious Christ to me. Holy Spirit, guide my speaking words of grace and truth about. Remember that uh, February the 28th, the last Sunday of February, is our Baptism Sunday. Uh, if you have questions about that, if you've been thinking about that, please uh, grab myself, grab Pastor Dave. We would love to talk with you more about that and let you be a part of that Sunday. Uh, we also have a, uh, a fundraiser for our youth. Is that correct? Tell us a little bit about that. Yes. Yeah, so, um, very, very excited. We are going to be going on a mission trip this summer to Colorado Springs. We're going to be connecting with the Vanderbeans. Probably. There than it is probably. <laughs> Some of you guys may remember Keith and Sharon. 
Um, they planted a new church, and uh, Sharon is the children's director there. So we're going to be helping them with their first ever VBS, um, and we're going to be doing some construction. It's going to be awesome. By the way, you're welcome to come with us. Um, our kids are, are really pretty awesome kids. So you're welcome to come and help out. Um, but yeah, between that and camp this year, our kids are looking to raise like between three and four hundred dollars for those activities. So um, we're asking you to hire them. Um, if you have a yard full of sticks like I do, and you need somebody to come and pick those up, maybe you need a babysitter, maybe you need, I don't know, a closet organized. Um, we're asking you to help them out by hiring them and paying them um, for jobs that you might need done around your house. So we have a table set up out in the cafe area and there's these little resumes, I guess, that the kids have filled out that kind of says some jobs that they would be comfortable doing, some things they've done in the past. Pick one of those up, pick a few of them up, um, and if there's something you need done, email me and let me know uh, what you have in mind and we'll set it up awesome that is a great opportunity so if you have some things that need to be done you can hire someone to do it right all right so there you go so uh that take take advantage of that and this is a great opportunity for them to have an opportunity to, to go and minister uh to a new church and so you can be a part of that even if you can't go to colorado you can be a part of that by by hiring these kiddos to do that uh just a couple of housekeeping things just real quick uh just in case you know anyone, you might want to text them. We are going to go ahead and cancel next service. Uh, we will restream uh, the first service in the second hour. I uh, understand it's getting a little bit slick out there, so be careful uh, going home. Uh, also, if you are on a leadership team, just uh, we want to be in about five minutes, just right over there um, after church is over, so we can discuss just a few things. Okay? God bless. Have a wonderful day. Stay warm out there, and enjoy your enjoy the rest of your week. Sure. <laughs>